So I've been wanting to get into game development for a while now, but there's a problem. I don't know how to code, or do art, or make games at all. So anyway, I convinced my friend to download Unity, and we tried anyway. This video will show our progress in learning Unity and making our first game. I'm sure nothing will go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I can't move. <laughs> the most common advice I hear given to aspiring game developers is to make a lot of quick games that you know you can finish, rather than trying to make one big project that you'll never be able to get through. With that in mind, we set a goal of making a playable demo in just two weeks of work. We don't really expect it to be well polished or even that fun in two weeks, it just has to be playable. Here's the initial concept we came up with. The plan is to make a 2D shooter where the player advances through waves of enemies with a boss every 10 waves. To try to make it interesting, we'd limit the player and only allow them to shoot mid-jump. This will hopefully force the player to be more strategic with where they jump and encourage movement around the map. The first couple of days we focused on getting the player movement to work. The first challenge was trying to figure out the best way to detect the walls when the player tried to climb them. We started by using box colliders on all sides of the player to determine which directions it can move in. If the box collider detected collisions with a wall, it would enable the player to move vertically and disable the horizontal movement. When jumping, the player would just continue to move until their box collider hit another wall. At the end of the day, we had a test area with a player surrounded by four walls that he could jump and move between. We also added projectiles for the player to dodge. Game's basically done already. Just look at that heroic looking white box. Since the player kind of scuttles along the walls sideways and jumps short distances, we took inspiration from those crabs that jump between rocks and chose to make the playable character a crab. Here's the first iteration. Don't worry, it looks better later. I promise. Once we gave our cube a crab sprite, we realized we're complete idiots and the box colliders won't work. First off, we had to actually rotate the crab sprite when he's on the side of a wall, because believe it or not, sprites don't look the same on every side like a white box does. Another problem we didn't think about was that we couldn't move our crab around corners. Our attempted solution got really convoluted, so buckle up. First, we kept two of the box colliders on either side of the player to check for the walls when the player moves horizontally. Then we added ray casts that shot out in all directions from the player. If the ray hit a wall, then it would tell the script to change the orientation of the player sprite. When cornering, the downward ray cast also checked to make sure that it was in contact with the floor. Once the player sprite got far enough over the edge, the ray would see the floor disappear and automatically flip the sprite around the corner. See all those colored lines in the editor when the player moves? Those are all the ray casts trying to figure out what the fuck is going on and where the player can actually move. After all the annoying work we did the previous day, we didn't make a ton of real progress and I got distracted by making a start screen. I also made a quick tile set for the walls that would have made a really nice time lapse if I would have remembered to record it. On day 4 we made an enemy script to follow the player. We also added a wave spawner that spawns the enemy prefabs into the scene. Imagine the spawner like a sort of shop. For example, let's say the spawner starts with 10 monies. It will randomly select enemies to buy from the pool until it runs out of money. We honestly didn't have ideas for what the enemies would be at this point, so let's just use fish as examples. If we buy the big fish for 2 monies, then the spawner will have 8 monies left to spend. Once it runs out of monies, it will stop and start spawning the wave. The number of money the spawner can spend on enemies increases each wave. With the spawner design, we can randomize the enemy types that spawn each round, assign different cost values based on how powerful the enemy type is, and allow the wave to gradually increase in difficulty as the player progresses. Day 5 is a big day for making progress, and a lot of funny bugs to go with it. My friend and I would occasionally call each other to show off the progress we've made. Here are some of the iterations of the shooting script. You ready to see the the great shooting script? You you can walk around just fine. <laughs> so you, you just like leave a streak. Oh my god! <laughs> Check this shit out. All right, it's a little hard to aim. <laughs> It's like really hard <laughs> to play this game. <laughs> also, my balls are not killing themselves. Day six, we started thinking more about the direction we wanted to take this game, finally making an actual document that held our ideas for future mechanics and a to-do list. Yes, it took us six days to make a to-do list. We're not exactly the most organized people. 
The idea for the game loop we came up with is that every 10 waves of enemies, you're ported to a boss room, and after beating the boss, you're put in a new map with 10 more waves of even harder enemies. The game will continue to loop until you eventually die. For our first basic enemy, we had the idea of making a puffer fish that puffed up when shooting the player. After drawing the animation, we edited the existing enemy script to pause while it was puffing up to make it look like it was charging a shot. Alright, let's see it. Oh yeah! That's so good! On day 7 we worked on expanding the wave spawner script. In the previous iteration of the spawner, it would only spawn one wave and then would end. We added in the logic for the spawner to know when the waves were done and progressively spawn more enemies per wave. Uh, that's not right. Oh my goodness! We also started testing out map designs. I think something with the camera has to change. Yeah, I can't see shit. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> this jump distance is massive. What the fuck? I feel like the scale is good, but you can't see whoa, shit. Whoa, 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 what just happened? <laughs> I'm broken. Okay, so there might be a lot of bugs still, but that's it for the first week of work. We have the basic movement and shooting, a wave spawner with one enemy type, some animations, a jank start screen, and a lot of plans for future mechanics. Our version for the demo at the end of the next week would be 10 waves and the first boss fight. This would mean adding items that increase the player's strength in order to keep up with the waves getting harder, more enemy types, a more cohesive first map, and a boss fight. There are also a lot of issues to fix with what we have made in our first week. We still bounce off corners instead of landing properly. The enemy will get stuck on walls while trying to follow the player. Finally, there is this weird bug that makes the position of the mouse affect how fast your projectile shoots which makes the shooting feel really awkward. Overall, I feel pretty happy with what we've done in the first week, but there is obviously still a lot to do if we want to have something playable by the end of next week.